Good day and welcome to Community Hotline Metro East Production. My name is Leslie Garth and here today we have Dr. Jeffrey Schecht and Michael Shaw. And gentlemen, where are you from? I'm the music director and conductor of the Organ Per Art Chamber Orchestra, which is a regional chamber ensemble that uh, uh, is comprised of, of both professional and high caliber amateur musicians who are uh, dedicated to providing passionate and enriching performances throughout the community. Um, we're also an organization that is, uh, uh, works to provide a local forum for performers from, uh, from around the Portland, greater Portland area to perform with the orchestra, uh, both inside the orchestra and also as soloists with the ensemble. Um, and also we, we look to uh, enrich and, uh, and promote music education throughout the, the greater Portland and Vancouver areas. Okay. And Mike? Yes. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm the uh, development director, and I've got probably one of the best jobs in the performing arts, and that is I get to go out and talk to a lot of people, uh, hopefully to get them uh, really excited about the things that we do, the music that we play, the programs that we have, and inspire them to get their checkbooks out and start writing checks. Oh. And that's what I do. And we actually brought a little sound clip of one of our recent performances uh, for your audience, just to, so they can kind of get a sense of, instead of just having us talk about uh, you know, the abstract of the orchestra, but actually get a chance to hear the ensemble in performance. And that clip was uh, from our, our concert this past May. That was, of course, uh, a little excerpt from Beethoven's Fifth Symphony um, from, a, from a concert titled Da 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 Da, to, of course, to, uh, to highlight that particular piece. Oh, how nice. So you're the man in control. Mm -hmm. And so how many people are in, the, in there? We range anywhere from 35 to 55 musicians, depending on the type of works we do. Um, each each uh, concert is unique in itself because it, it, it's uh, under a specific theme. Uh, we do some works that uh, require large forces. We do some that are more intimate, more uh, even as, as few as five or six players. So it, it all depends, but anywhere from, uh, on average, about 35 to 55 musicians. Okay. Um, Mike, do you play? Yes, I do. Oh, boy, this uh, you play. <clears throat> I'm a cellist. I've been playing since I uh, was 10. Some people uh, think that I still play like I'm 10. <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it is really a treat uh, to be able not uh, just play in the orchestra, but at the same time to contribute, you know, uh, things that I know about uh, development and, and the arts management. And... Uh, when you've got so many wonderful players, anywhere from age 18 to 80, you know, that uh, have an opportunity to share their gifts with the community and be able to experience new works that they haven't played or revisit uh, older works that they, maybe they've played, you know, 50 times. Right. The nice thing is that when you've got a talented music director such as uh, Jeff, uh, that the insights that are a, uh, able to be shared with the musicians as, uh, as part of the education, as part of the program of you know, uh, sharing with adults and then uh, taking that experience to our audiences. Okay, so what's the most difficult part of your job? Most difficult, dealing with this guy probably <laughs> is the most difficult part. Uh, it, it's, I mean, I wouldn't say anything is necessarily difficult in the sense of uh, more so just uh, more so uh, picking programs that are appropriate for the audience, things that will uh, that will uh, interest the uh, the community, things that will that will provide value and cultural interest to the to the community. Um, which actually, uh, uh, we we have four concerts actually coming up this season. Um, the first coming up in October, uh, Saturday, October 25th at 7:30 p.m. Uh, and this is at uh, the chapel at Mary's Woods at Merrillhurst. Um, and this program is uh, we titled uh, October Extravaganza, which uh, is a kickoff for our season. It's our it's our initial 
uh, initial concert for the uh, for the full season. Um, it will be premiering um, uh, Mozart's Symphony Number no. 40 in G Minor, uh, along with Grieg's Four Norwegian Dances, Von Williams' uh, English Folk Songs, um, and a chamber work with just the wind players. Uh, we'll be doing Strauss's Opus 7, Serenade for Winds. Um, this coming December on uh, Sunday, Octo uh, I'm sorry, October, Sunday, uh, December 14th at 7.30 p.m. as well, uh, same place, Mary's Woods, uh, we will be having our Winter Gala, which is uh, both a fundraising event and also a, a, a cultural performance as well. Uh, that, that performance will be hosted by Edmund Stone of 89.9 Portland All Classical Radio. Okay. Uh, we'll also have uh, some guest artists who will be performing Box Brandenburg uh, concerto number five, and this this performance specifically uh, is a, a kickoff to one of our new programs that we're working with. is is the highlighting of of talented uh, solo performers throughout the Portland area, and so we'll have three performers with the orchestra that that concert, uh, who are all Portland residents and who are performers in in the area, and, and will be soloing with the orchestra. Two of which are, are musicians in the orchestra. In March. March 7th, uh, Saturday, March 7th uh, at 7.30 p.m., same place, Mary's Woods at Merrillhurst. Uh, we'll be joined with uh, guest artist Susan Smith, who will play the, the Schumann Piano Concerto with us, um, as well as Beethoven's uh, Sixth Symphony, the Pastorale. And then to conclude our season, we'll be having another concert titled Vines of Spring, which is Saturday, May 30th, at, uh, again at 7.30, again at Mary's Woods. Uh, and this performance will, uh, will feature the, uh, the Schumann Symphony Number no. Three, the Rhenish Symphony, and will also be a special feature because we'll have a brand new work that has never been heard before. Uh, one of the programs that we support is the John Kenneth Cole Composition Prize, and so that May 30th concert will be an opportunity to hear a brand new work, um, also by a young composer uh, who's under the age of 25, and uh, and that's definitely something not to be missed. Oh, it sounds like it. So how did he get connected with that? How did you select someone? I mean, there's a lot of talent out there. Mm -hmm. How do you select someone to hold, I mean, to... Composers will, composer. composers will submit their works to us, and we have a, we have a panel that goes through and, and, and judges them, essentially, as, um, as a competition. Um, and we select the winner from that. That winner, um, in addition to getting a $500 scholarship uh, and a commemorative plaque, they'll get a premiere uh, by the orchestra of their work, um, and, of course, a recording to go along with it. Oh, okay. And so, are you involved in that um, as far as the Not director? Not from the artistic end, okay. but, you know, one of, one of my uh, uh, primary responsibilities is, you know, to, to tap local uh, and regional resources for uh, uh, assistance in funding various programs and, and uh, concerts uh, because, you know, in the performing arts, you know, only about 30 percent, 35 percent of the revenue comes from ticket sales and the rest is uh, contributed by foundations and uh, through grants and uh, corporate giving, that kind of thing. So uh, my involvement is sort of behind the scenes to make sure that uh, we have all the resources necessary to fulfill the programs. So Jeffrey, so how long have you been around? I mean, how long is this sort of how long has it been around? The organization itself has been around for 13 years, okay. and this is my fourth season as music director. So I've been uh, been around for four years. So, and you enjoy it? Where, where are you initially from? Originally from Minneapolis. Okay. Yeah, so I, I came, originally came out here uh, as a visiting professor at Lewis and Clark College, um, and then became involved with this orchestra as music director, and, and it's hooked me in. I'm, I'm, I'm here for, for the long haul. Okay, you put both feet into this? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. left Lewis and, and Clark. Heart and soul. Heart and soul? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Um, and, and I hate to sound stupid, but so tell me what type of people that you, you know, kind of, to be honest, I've never attended any musical of such. Sure. Uh, sure. I can't, I'll be honest with you, I can't even tell you any concert that I've attended since I've been grown. So, um, we'll give you a free ticket. <laughs> <laughs> we it want everybody, my culture here. <laughs> we want everybody life. to be exposed. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this is a good way of getting exposed. Um, mm -hmm. I, Sounds like the music. I listen to it. It sounds wonderful, soothing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I think I would enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But so is it hard to get more people involved or get, get engaged? And Th are that's, you that's doing okay? That's one of the million dollar questions for for any arts organization is how do you how do you draw in the community? How do you outreach to the to the community? 
Um, and we try to make our concerts accessible to the widest range possible. We try to have uh, interesting, uh, beautiful music that, uh, that people enjoy listening to, that the musicians are passionate about playing, uh, which is, of course, the first key to creating that, uh, that dynamic, that, uh, that, that energy that happens at a, at a live performance. Um, but also to provide uh, high-quality performances that are affordable to the general audience, uh, that, uh, that, that bring, bring, bring in educational concepts and, and, and topics into the general performance area. And, and in a sense, not necessarily to, to, to break down the, the, the preconceptions of classical music, right. but, to, but to make it accessible and to make it interesting and entertaining and you know, to bring something of, of value and, and excitement to the community. So do you, um, do you go to youths, um, to schools? Um, do you target young people to get them engaged and move them along the certainly, way? Certainly, certainly. Part, part, what, part of the uniqueness of our, our organization is we have two youth, uh, youth orchestras that are affiliated with us, the, the Oregon Pro Arte Youth Chamber Orchestra um, and also the Pro, Pro Arte Conservatory Strings. Um, and those two orchestras, of course, are designed for young students, uh, roughly uh, middle school and high school age students, uh, to get a chamber orchestra experience, so they play. Um, we, we also do runouts to, to schools. We do uh, uh, concerts for, uh, for youth. Uh, I, myself, as music director, will go and do clinics with, with uh, local schools, um, adjudicate and provide clinics for, uh, for various competitions and also uh, conferences in the, in the region. Uh, so we, we try to try to uh, not only just reach out to our adult audience, but also to um, to work with students and to generate that excitement and that that passion for classical music uh, with with youth as well. Okay, so it sounds like wonderful organization. It sounds like we should be getting engaged, mm -hmm. um, myself included. You know, I kind of live this sheltered life. Maybe I should <laughs> broaden my own horizon here. Um, so. Now, just kind of recap some of the events that's coming mm -hmm. up. Um, can you go through that real quick? Sure, um, sure. So the, the the first concert we have coming up here in just a few weeks here is uh, October 25th, October Extravaganza. That's at uh, Mary's Woods at Merrillhurst, uh, 7.30. Uh, again, in December, we have December 14th, uh, our, which was our winter gala, which include a, a fun evening with guest artists and guest hosts. Uh, and uh, that, again, at the same place, Mary's Woods at Merrillhurst. Uh, we have March 7th, which will include guest artist Susan Smith uh, with the Schumann Piano Concerto. Uh, and, uh, and then fu fu uh, finishing up our season in the end, at the end of May, May 30th, we have Vines of Spring, which will be a delightful concert, including the showcasing of the, uh, the winner of the John Kenneth Cole composition, competition. Okay, so it sounds like you're, it's, you do four concerts? Four, between four and six. Four and six mm -hmm. each year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if people are interested in attending, you got a website that they can get on and get tickets that way? or Yes, they, yes, so they can visit our website, uh, which is www.organproarte.org. I say arte. It's, it's art, but we say arte just so that people don't forget the E at the end of art, uh, .org. Um, and, and if it's uh, on the screen, uh, they can visit that as well. Okay. Um, any final comments from you, Mike? Uh, uh, yeah. It's a wonderful organization. I've been involved with it for since its inception, and it's it's one of the most unique organizations uh, in the Oregon, uh, Washington area, because it not only do we have the youth orchestras, but we have the adult uh, orchestra as a combined uh, uh, program effort. So we're pretty unique in that aspect. Okay, and I believe we have one final um, music um, ensemble. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And to, play, to play us out, uh, we have a little excerpt from our from our summer invitational program, uh, which is uh, by Edvard Grieg. It's the uh, second movement from his uh, Holberg Suite. 